Hey, welcome to part 3. In part 3 we're gonna be creating the textures as the final part. So we start by linking the bakes that we did the mama set. Then I'm gonna change the settings of our viewport a little bit. Then I'm gonna set up some folders for the material. So leather. Then in that folder I'll have another folder the actual leather part then another one for the thing that goes under the leather so that's like a more rough light leather now i'm just putting in a mask with the id map that we baked in mama set and i'm dragging a metal material for the buckle i'm just doing a red color to quickly check the mask if everything's all right so in the base layer i'm gonna change the colors so it represents leather a little bit better so we just have a light brown and then we have a darker brown for the top layer. I'm also going to put a curvature layer and I'm just going to have a fill layer and in that fill I'm going to place the curvature in the color and in the roughness and then I'm going to overlay that on top of our layer stack. This is going to give our textures a little bit more depth. So I'm just going to be painting the holes a dark black to fake it that we have some holes there. Now by using the ID map again, I'm also going to give a new layer to the stitches, so I can control the color of them. So here I'm just creating a folder, I'm going to put some huge saturation filters in the folder. And then we're going to apply some masks to them. And by this we can have certain parts of the color texture be more dark or more light, or with a little bit more saturation. And by doing this you're gonna create a lot of nice natural looking variation in your colors. And by doing this the textures are gonna look way more believable. This is one of the most fun parts is the detail folder. And in this detail folder we're just gonna have a mask. I'm gonna fill that with a detail map. So here I'm just using an alpha from texturing XYZ for leather. And I'm previewing our details by just having a simple fill layer with a color. Once I like the scope of those details, we bring those details in, we're using the height, as you can see, now we have some details in there. And from that part on, it's just creating new fill layers in this detail folder. And this can be for the roughness and for the color, so we can add more details in the other channels as well. And by putting the details, not just in the height, but also in the color and in the roughness, you're really gonna be bringing those details to life. Now the cool thing about setting up your leather material in like two different folders, one for the rough leather and then one for the actual like shiny nice leather, is that you can add a mask and then you can just kind of mask where you want the top layer to be. And this way we can create some really easy wear and tear. And I'm just going in with more and more procedurals to keep editing that mask until I get something that I like. We can mess around with the blending options to get a little bit of a different look. I think this is a very important step that most people skip. We can add a CC layer all the way on top that stands for color correction. And then we can just dump a bunch of uh, effects in there that influence the color. So I'm just using a color correct effect. Now we can play with the sliders to really quickly get a more dramatic look to the belt. So I'm just looking to add more contrast now. And you could do this by going back into your layer stack and adjusting the base layers. It's gonna be a little bit more hard to do and more time consuming. By doing it like this, you can just really quickly change the slider and get a different feel of the textures. So that's really good to find some happy accidents. And this part might be a little bit confusing, but you can create a folder for the folder that you already have for a leather layer, for example. And then we can create a new mask to that folder. So we get a little bit more of a non-destructive mask, as we can do a new generation of procedurals in this mask. And then it's also gonna apply the old mask. So right there I'm just building up some damage the belt I want to add some little cracks here and there and I'm gonna be doing the same that we did with the color map 
by having that CC folder for the color correction. I'm gonna drag another hue saturation effect on top. I'm gonna call this the roughness control. Now we can easily control all of the roughness and all of the roughness breakup that we added with a simple slider. And by doing this with filters, it just becomes so fast and easy to make adjustments and to see how that looks. And another little trick is to get a roughness control view saturation filter and add a mask to it. Now we can put a procedural in the mask to have some parts of the texture affected by the roughness control and other parts not. This is just going to create a little bit more breakup in the roughness channel. So this is quite an important step. All the way at the end I'm just going to go into a leather layer folder. I'm going to be painting a mask in. So I'm just going to be removing some of that layer following the details from a detail folder that we made. So it all looks natural. And here you can see the extra breakup that just going in and hand painting some parts does. I think it's a really nice little touch. And then as a last step, I'm gonna create a folder all the way on top called weathering. I'm gonna be pulling in some weathering effects and some wear effects. So I'm gonna start off with some dust. We can also put some other stuff in here like uh, little spots of grass, uh, maybe some blood splatters and whatever. This is just meant to add some storytelling to your textures and to make them more realistic. And even when we have put everything in, we can still go ahead and we can adjust some of those sliders of the hue saturation filters to see if we can get a bit more of a different look that we like better. And again, just by sliding a filter we can get a completely different feeling model, which can be really cool. Because if you look to something for too long, maybe you get stuck and by just quickly doing some sliders, you can get a fresh looking new texture. And I do also like to add the sharpen filter all the way at the top, just to make the textures look a little bit more sharp and crisp. And yeah, that's pretty much all that I did to texture this asset. And this video is meant to be like a quick little guide that you can look at. If you want to see the full progress, I'm going to be uploading it on Patreon. So that's like a 5 hour long video of creating the high, the low and the textures. It doesn't have voiceover, but you can see the complete progress that I go through. And I'll be linking that down in the description for anyone who's interested.